I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. I know I am. I just got back from the gym. I always feel better once I've gone to the gym. My blood's pumping. My ideas are flowing. Um, and uh, as a lot of you know, I run a bar. Uh, that is my my kind of main gig, right? Um, and I get a lot of people that come into the bar. I have a lot of experiences. I have a lot of um, have a lot of interactions. Um, and it allows me to be more social than I would be outside of the bar. Um, but uh, I had a really cool group of people that came in last night. And um, and just as a preface, uh, this video, uh, we're going to be talking about alternate arts. We're going to be talking about Pokemon alternate arts. We're going to be talking about how uh, Pokemon alternate arts have defined an entire generation of modern collectors and how really it's a phenomenon that, that, that didn't really start until you know sword and shield era uh, alternate arts people were really recognizing them and appreciating them and appreciating sun and moon alt arts which really were where the alt arts kind of began um but those kind of didn't get recognition until later on until really arguably several years later on of course there were people collecting there are people that had stayed you know stayed with the hobby stayed current with the hobby there are people that haven't missed a beat and to them my hats off i wasn't one of those people i came back in kind of during sun and moon and i wasn't particularly a fan of the sun and moon kind of these yellowish tag team borders but since then these cards have grown on me massively and um one of them one of my best pickups was this uh this uh mar shadow um machamp and it just looks absolutely stunning this is one of my favorite cards right now um and it does help that i picked this card up for 40 bucks uh but that's kind of happening across it's kind of happening across um the entire hobby right now alt alt arts are getting um super cheap super affordable it's not like it was during the pokemon boom during the pandemic during sword and shield era during a time where everyone was fumbling over each other trying to get these alternate arts bidding exorbitantly on ebay um, but anyways story time back to the story so i had this group of people coming to the bar uh they were going to a thrift expo um so also shout out to backstock um, they are a, you can find them on Instagram, uh, at backstock. They might even comment on this video, but they do, they do thrift clothing, right? And they print their own stuff on clothing. Uh, mainly they print like retro stuff on clothing. Um, and one thing, um, that has crept into their inventory now is creating Pokemon based retro inventory. And that stuff for them has just been flying off the shelves. So it's very interesting how fashion and pop culture. And we kind of talked about this a little bit with the Tiffany and co uh, collaboration with Pokemon, but it's interesting how fashion and pop culture, um, in a franchise like Pokemon, which is really a TCG franchise, um, has kind of mended with all these other things. Um, but anyways, I really wanted to know what they thought about Pokemon in general. And I thought, you know what? Alternate arts are a great, uh, topic to be on. Most people know about them. Most people like them. Um, but I was kind of shocked. Um, they weren't necessarily big Pokemon card collectors, um, but you don't need to be a big Pokemon card collector to really understand um, some of the, the nicer cards in the hobby, to understand cards like, you know, the Umbreon VMAX, the, the Moonbreon that everyone touted for so long, or the Lugia alt art. Um, you know, people were going crazy for these cards. You know, when, those Lugia, when this Lugia V came out for Silver Tempest, it was nuts, and I still remember vividly everybody talking about these cards, and it's crazy how quickly things change. You know, now people are getting out of the hobby, you know, alternate arts are hitting all-time lows, like, you know, sub $100 for alternate arts that were extremely hard to pull. Um, take, for example, this Charizard V from Brilliant Stars. I tried pulling this Charizard V, and I spent over $1,000 trying to pull this card. I bought so many Brilliant Stars sleeved packs, I bought so many ETBs, I opened booster boxes, could not get that card to save my life. Um, and it's crazy now that you can pretty much pick that card up for under 100 bucks, which would be the cost of like, give or take, two ETBs at the time, which you probably would not pull that card out of two ETBs at the time. So it's nuts because... Um, 
now these cars are so affordable, but um, people haven't forgotten. One of the one of the discussions that we got on are, are kind of where alt arts are going value wise um, and how popular they are. And I was asking them, you know, they were 90s babies like myself. You know, I was born in 1994. So a lot of the stuff that I resonate with just happens to be older stuff. It, you know, I can appreciate other eras of Pokemon. You know, you, you kind of, that kind of grows on you naturally. You, you appreciate all eras of Pokemon, regardless of what you think about them initially. Paradox Rift is a perfect example. I wasn't really crazy about Paradox Rift, but then I saw this more, I pulled this more Peko illustration rare, and it's, it's just, it's amazing. There's stuff all over this card. It's really, there's nothing like it in the hobby right now. Um, and stuff like that really defines the hobby and defines where it's going. And, you know, if people are going to continue to collect um, and what they're going to be collecting if they do continue to collect. Um, and what these guys were collecting. So they were, you know, I asked that these thrift conventions are there because there's, it's, I think it's called Thrift Con. It's here in Charlotte. Uh, that'll be going on today and tomorrow, I believe. And they'll be coming back through the bar. I need to actually figure out some Pokemon cards to give them as a gift. Uh, just because it was so cool to 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 be working at my bar till 1 in the morning. And I'm talking about Pokemon with a group of people that aren't even really... You know, they're not here for a Pokemon card convention. They're not here really to do anything regarding Pokemon. But somehow that topic came to be. And, you know, they talked about how it's part of you know, some of the, you know, some of the shirts and some of the branding that they're doing right now, they're using Pokemon that that's really, really hot right now. And as much as people think it might be going out of style again, I just don't think that's the case. You know, when they were telling me that their retro shirts are flying off the shelves with Pokemon stuff printed on them, I was really kind of amazed by that. Um, cause you can buy Pokemon clothing anywhere, but you know, they're anyways, I, I was asking them like, what are the cards that they like most? I was really I'm kind of expecting, you know, a biased answer, like, you know, really love WotC, like base set Charizard, base set Blastoise. And I'm a sucker for, for base set WotC. I love all that old stuff. Jungle, Fossil, Gym Heroes, Gym Challenge. That's that's my bread and butter, honestly. And I, if I could do things over, um, I would probably mainly collect those cards and, and really nothing else. Uh, that's the stuff that I really like most. Um, but... During the craze, during the pandemic, during the boom, I was struggling. I was trying to collect sealed product. I was trying to open product. I was trying to collect theme decks. I was trying to collect all the vintage cards that I wanted and fill up all my personal binders full of the all the vintage sets. And on top of that, I was trying to chase all of these alternate arts that everybody was talking about. It was a crazy time to be a collector, and it's calmed down a lot, it, you know, you know, since then. And now I ask myself. You know, is this the time? I still love this card. I still have an affinity for this Charizard V alt art. You know, I ask myself, like, look at this thing. This thing is absolutely beautiful. Have we forgotten how incredible this card is? Is that why it's dropped down to ninety dollars a card? Maybe eighty, maybe even seventy dollars a card. This card is worth way more than seventy dollars, just based on the extremely harsh pull rates that we had in Brilliant Stars. Um, it's amazing to me, and I keep thinking to myself, like. I know I need to contribute more to my IRA, to my retirement. I know I need to get, you know, Aspen's college plan set up. I need to focus on stuff like that. I know I need to pay off my house. I know that, you know, I've got some bills from a vacation that we went on and I'm still struggling to pay those off and deal with that. I know that I should be investing in my traditional active portfolio, but then I always come back to Pokemon and I'm wondering, is this the absolute best time right now to be buying alternate arts, to be, you know, investing on the side on just collecting a couple duplicates of these alternate arts, because I feel like all it takes is another franchise boom. All it takes is another cycle. All it takes is another time where Pokemon is the most popular thing in the world. And then boom, all these alt arts are going to be worth a couple hundred bucks. And people are going to be saying, I remember when those alt arts were sub hundred dollars and nobody cared about them. That is what we're in right now. We're in a buyer's market right now where you could buy stacks of these alternate arts. And there are people out there making these plays, whether it's you know cheaper, less sought after alternate arts, or whether it's highly sought after alternate arts. Um, for example, 
I know um, a guy right now that's uh, collecting all of these Scarlet and Violet alternate arts. He's just collecting them like crazy. Like he's buying as many uh, tens as he can get his hands on. They're already graded. He's getting them for dirt cheap. And he's just buying those and stacking them up. And honestly, because Scarlet and Violet is such a new era and it's not even a really highly touted era, I feel like there's a lot of value to be had there. And then I know people that are, you know, collecting like a Collecticon. There was a guy that bought a stack of Giratinas. Hi, baby. Good morning. Um, I got up super early this morning so I could squeeze in more out of the day. I really want to start getting up early again, working out every day. Um, it makes doing videos a lot easier when it doesn't uh, interfere with the rest of the day. Hi, baby. How are we doing today? My daughter's looking at me through the... Okay. I didn't close the gate when I came home, so um, wife is not happy with me. Anyways... Um, yeah, so it was amazing talking to these guys and we were talking about alt arts and where they're going to be and they were just going off on how they love alternate arts and how, you know, they collectively, their group, you know, is saying that they collectively believe that alt arts are the future of kind of investing and collecting and having fun in the Pokemon hobby, right? Because we, before alt arts, we never had anything like it. It was always very basic artwork. Guys, hush! Of course, the, the dogs are going nuts now. Um, and you guys are probably used to that at this point on my channel. There's always noises. There's always background stuff going on. We're a family household. There's always stuff going on. But, um, yeah, it was interesting to me that uh, they weren't at all looking for, like, vintage stuff. Like, like, what they were doing with their clothing brand really was, like, retro stuff. Like, they had shirts with Gym Heroes stuff printed all over it. And I was just like... Yo, know, this shirt is off the chain. Like, this is amazing. Um, but yeah, they were more interested, uh, more fascinated with the alternate art market and what's going on with those. And we were talking about how, you know, they think the future of collecting will be going after all of the alternate art cards. Um, and I actually know people, this is becoming more and more common right now. Um, you know, trying to collect every single alternate art ever that is a very expensive endeavor. I mean, yes, per card, there's great value. Modern is a great way to go growth-wise, value-wise. But at the same time, trying to go after all of those, that is an insane goal. And I actually know people, I know at least three people right now that are trying to actively collect every single modern alternate art in a PSA 10. Um, I do think that that play whether it's a play or a collection goal, that's an incredible goal and I think an incredible play in the long run. When I look at a lot of my alternate arts, they're off center, they might not be perfectly cut, they might have a white dot on the back. It's very, like, I honestly think that it's not that easy to get tens on uh, modern al alternate arts. But there are, you know, cards with really high populations like the uh, Umbreon and a PSA 10, there's over 8,000 of those. And it just goes to show you that, like, okay, there's plenty of these cards all over the place. What's the deal? Why would we care when there are so many of these printed to oblivion? Why am I going to pay a premium? I'll just let the market die out, basically. Um, I don't think that the alternate art market's going to go much lower. I really don't think it's going to go much lower. Um, if anything, I think we're experiencing a short dip, and then it's going to trend up higher. Do I have a lot of skin in the game? No, not at all. So there's, there's no point. It's not like I have a hundred Charizard V's and I'm like, the Charizard V is going to be an $150 card. Well, it might even be that still. It might still be fetching sales like that. But I know last I checked, it was a $90, $100 card max. Um, but you know, I don't have big skin in the game as far as that goes. My skin in the game is really with sealed product and touting sealed product. And honestly, I don't even see crazy gains with sealed product right now. I mean, I don't really see any gains. What I see are very trivial upticks in value. That's what I see with modern sealed product. You're not going to get that that money, honestly, for five years, probably, or more. I, I really don't think that there's going to be gains there. Um, you know, there, there, are, there are plays that you could have made when, like, sets that we didn't care about, Vivid Voltage, Chilling Rain, Fusion Strike. Uh, when those sets... Um, battle styles, when those sets were like 
once they're 150, like maybe that's a play. You're going to take, you're going to deal with shipping. You're going to take a hit on eBay from fees. Um, I don't know. It just doesn't really seem worth it to take up the space and, and, and the, uh, the, the risk of having that money tied up. Uh, but it, but it has played out in some ways and I hope I'm wrong. I have a, I have a closet stacked full of sealed product. I hope I'm wrong. I'm just collecting that stuff. One, cause it'll be fun to open down the road Two, maybe I'll be able to make something on it. And three, um, I think that a lot of sword and shield and scarlet violet sets are kind of going to be lame during those eras. But as the years go on, We'll look back and we'll be opening these sets and it'll be a lot more fun, in my opinion, to open them later. So that'll be something that I look forward to with my sealed collection later um, because I, I highly doubt that I'm going to end up uh, end up selling it off. Um, but um, yeah, it's amazing where alt arts have gone. And, um, you know, if we, you know, some of my favorite ones here, I think that kind of define... Um, to find an era and we've got some sun and moon ones there but it's it's really these guys and and one of them is in grading right now my rayquaza v max is in grading right now but you know i have these in my binders too these are just duplicates that i have i picked them up at collecticon because i was like you know what these prices are stupid i'm gonna pick up a couple more of these because i think they're really sick uh one of my favorites you know the lugia was really big from silver tempest Charizard was huge from Billion Stars. And then Evolving Skies, I mean, the box the box has Rayquaza on it. Um, I think Rayquaza pretty much defines Evolving Skies. I know a lot of people like Waifu and Trainer Arts. I am not a huge fan of Zinnia. When I was talking to the group last night, they actually really love this card and how it looks um, kind of with a, a separate environment with Zinnia and Wismer. Um, I personally think this card would have been so much better without Zinnia in it. I personally feel like this card should have had all of the attention on Rayquaza. It should have just been Open Sky and Rayquaza right there. And it, I think it would have been a more phenomenal card, honestly. Uh, but it's still, even with Xenia, even with her waifu-esque getting in the way of the beauty of Rayquaza, um, I'm really a bigger fan of the Pokemon themselves. I just could care less about the trainer cards. That's just not something that I'm into. If you're into it, that's fantastic. Uh, everybody has their niche. Everybody has things that they like to collect. I know almost everybody that I know in the hobby likes waifu. They like the character rares. I am an anomaly in the sense that like I just doesn't do anything for me. Um, but uh, yeah, it's amazing how these alt arts have defined an entire generation of collectors. And when we were talking about the sheer quantity of these printed, I was trying to explain to them that you know, it's going to be hard to see into the future what, what these are going to be valued at because there are just so many of them out there. Could the value tank even lower as the graded population spike? Um, but I'm also aware that as time moves forward, everything is relative, right? Um, WotC was printed to oblivion, but relative to our population today, and the population of collectors, really specifically the population of collectors today collecting um, Pokemon cards, there's a lot more of them than what they were printing back in 99. So there's more demand. And while these cards are not rare, WotC, base set, base set first edition, none of it is really rare. Really. First edition Charizard, like one of my favorites over here. First edition Charizard is not a rare card, and I, I understand that now. This is something that I really didn't want to um, accept um, or agree with early on, uh, but it's a really easy card to get your hands on. And actually, right now, a lot of people are liquidating. Um, you're seeing people selling their high-end Grail cards. You're seeing Charizard first editions going for less than they ever went for the past two years. So... I think it's a market-wide thing. I don't think it's really connected to just alt arts. I think it's everything. Um, but I was just meaning to say that it's not rare. Uh, but relative to populations and how many people there are collecting in the hobby today going after these cards, right? Um, there could be a million of a certain card printed. But when there's 3 million, 4 million, 5 million, 10 million people collecting that all want that card, 
it's kind of irrelevant how many were printed because relative to growing population and people in the hobby, uh, that number growing, and hopefully it continues to grow. Uh, it keeps things healthy, it keeps things fresh, it keeps new people coming into the hobby that make new content and bring something to the table that others might not. Um, you know, I think that even though there's a ton of these alternate arts printed, what I'm trying to say is even though there's a ton of them printed, everything is relative and the value is still likely going to go up. It's probably a no brainer because alternate arts are just so cool that everybody wants to get their hands on alt arts. I still feel the vibes of the last two years of just like, I have to have this alt art. This alt art in the set is a must have. I know with Chilling Rain, I never understood why there was so much hate for Chilling Rain. I know a lot of people like the Galarian Moltres. Um, my favorite card out of Chilling Rain is actually the Blaziken. The Blaziken is just, value aside, before it had even spiked in value, because recently the Blaziken VMAX uh, alt art has done very good. But even before it was doing good, I picked that card up, I think for 140, 150. And it's, I just thought this card is so fantastic. Why would you not buy this card? If the box is 80 bucks and people are calling it chilling pain, then just buy the alternate art. You know, and this goes to say with kind of any set, right? If you're going to open up a set, there's like no point to doing those openings. If you're going for a particular card, if you want to open just for fun, Go for it, but you know, everybody's beating this topic to a pulp of just like buy singles, buy singles, buy singles. And you know, kind of kills the fun if everybody's just buying singles. I still think you should open product every time and time again just to feel more connected with the hobby, feel more like a collector. You know, collecting isn't just necessarily buying and, and consuming, that's well. And maybe it's, yeah, it's all linked, you know, being a consumer, being a collector, being an investor. Um, but there's lines, there's lines that, you know, you don't necessarily want to cross for good. And I think looking at Pokemon strictly as an investment is not a good line to cross for good. But at the same time, you want to be smart with your money. You want to make, you know, <clears throat> sound decisions. And you really can't take, you have to take everybody's advice especially on YouTube, you have to take everybody's advice with a grain of salt. You know, a, a lot of this stuff is going to be biased opinions. A lot of it's going to be pure speculation. Um, a lot of my stuff is biased opinions and pure speculation. And I will fully admit that. Um, but if you're interested in what I have to say and you enjoy the channel and you appreciate the content, that's all that matters to me. Um, I don't know. I'm interested to see in the comments, what you guys are thinking about alt arts and how they're going to fare down the road. You know, it's scary because you have sets like Crown Zenith that just defy all laws of like what rationally makes sense with the market. Like Crown Zenith just has plummeted. And then similarly with, with, you know, defying your expectations of like what you think is going to happen in this hobby. I think myself and a lot of people included thought Crown Zenith was going to be the, just the absolute bread and butter of Sword and Shield. It's not. Spoiler alert, Crown Zenith is just plummeting and I, I can't even sell alt arts that I have that are graded in high grades. I can't even get them off right now. It's amazing how difficult it is to sell those Crown Zenith cards when they are absolutely mind-blowingly beautiful. Mind-blowing. Like... The Deoxys in that set, Mewtwo in that set, the Legendary Dogs in that set, Crown Zenith is amazing. And if you're finding those Black Friday, Walmart, Pikachu V boxes for 25 bucks, let me tell you, that's the price that I got them for. And that was when it came out and that was when, you know, I, I a local shop hooked me up, right? So if you can find those in the store for 25 bucks, no brainer. Not to mention, that was the first set that I pulled gold cards back to back in the same box. Never seen anything like it. Crown Zenith was an amazing time when that when that set came out. But again, it defies everything that we think that we know about the hobby. Um, similarly, Evolving Skies. I mean, great set. A lot of great bangers in that set. People call it Evolving Cries. It's really ironic because it's just it's such a hyped up set but it's kind of a garbage set to open up. It really is. I mean, 
$400, for a box of Evolving Skies. It makes literally no sense. Literally no sense. But at the same time, it's like, okay, but it has all of these hits. And you might pull these hits. The Dragonite V, which is a card that I still want. That is a big alternate art that I wish I had that I could show off. Um, Dragonite V is, is absolutely epic. I love that card. But uh, you've got the Evolutions, the Dragonite V, the Rayquazas. You've got a lot of stuff going on with Evolving Skies. So I understand that price a little bit more. And, you know, I'm wondering when is Pokemon going to give us a set like that again? I know it's not Paldean Fates. Paldean Fates is amazing. You've got a shiny Gardevoir, a Mew, and we're going to we're gonna talk about Paldean Fates. You know, I'll put some images up, talk about some of the Pokemon, give you my opinion on them. Um, but I don't think it's going to be Paldean Fates. I still think that Scarlet Violet 151 um, is the best thing that we're going to get for this era. I really think it's the best thing that we're going to get for this era. The singles are still proving that. They're still holding up really well. And the product wasn't everywhere. It wasn't easy to get your hands on. I don't care like what you say because I'm, I'm giving you the experience that I've had here in Charlotte with trying to get 151 product. Um, it, it restocked on Pokemon Center. The booster bundles restocked at like $26, whatever. They were gone instantly. In like 30 minutes, they were gone. So there's still a very strong modern sealed product demand. There's still a strong demand for 151 and honestly i don't think i regret opening up as much 151 as i did i i kind of regretted it in the following days because it was just a lot i've got a whole wall behind me of 151 um but looking back now my 151 binder is almost complete and i pulled every single card myself that's a pretty badass feeling um but yeah and the you know our getting into all these alternate arts kind of led into a snowball effect uh that brought you know, the past back in, it brought Sun and Moon back in, it brought that, you know, back on the map. And I just, with where the franchise is going now, I think alternate arts are about to just be headed on the way up. How many more of them are out there for us to consume? How many years of collectors coming into the hobby will it take for that product, to, you know, to dry out a little bit um, and end up in people's binders or in grading? Um, who knows? Um, speaking of grading... Um, I got my, my same friend that submitted this Umbreon for me, um, our, my, my small seven card PSA submission is, uh, should be getting back by the end of the month. And in there will be a VMAX Rayquaza. Given how lightly they're throwing out PSA 10s these days, I'm hoping that that Rayquaza VMAX gets a PSA 10, uh, because honestly, Kind of one of the pinnacles, one of the highlights of collecting in Sword and Shield was, you know, I hate to say it, but it was Evolving Skies. This is like, we, we can't argue with this at this point. It was Evolving Skies, and the two cards, really, Umbreon VMAX, even though I think the V, honestly, the Umbreon V, I, I kind of like more than the VMAX. Um, same with the Rayquaza V. I almost like, I think I like the Rayquaza V more than the VMAX, but... Um, Umbreon VMAX, Rayquaza VMAX, those are two cards that like really define um, Evolving Skies. And then I think if you want to go back, if you want to backtrack first, if you want to, if you are trying to collect all the alt arts and you want to backtrack, you want to start, you know, from the beginning, you got to start with uh, Sun and Moon. Uh, and if you're going with Sun and Moon, honestly, these are the two cards that I think really define sun and moon uh in terms of alternate arts in terms of the cards that you really want to have i wish these were tens i can't really afford tens i have nines and i'm happy with them they're beautiful they're both off center but i would rather have off centered pristine nines um than have you know have a dinged up nine that's perfectly centered that's just me um but these are the two cards that i would say um, and they're both, you know, they're both coming down relatively to cheaper price points than they were. But uh, these are two cards I would definitely try and get your hands on. Uh, I know there was a point in time where this Latios Latios was just absolutely booming. This was the talk of the town in the hobby. Y'all remember? Y'all remember when it was all hype? Everything was hype about this card. This is the card that everybody wanted. The team up, the team up Latios Latios GX. I'm not going to lie, this card gives me a lot of joy. Like, I love looking at this card. It never gets old. 
And I vaguely remember seeing this card on eBay before it had kind of popped off and thinking, it's a really cool card. But do I need that right now? Nah. Um, same with the Gengar Mimikyu. you. Uh, really cool card. I will say a little bit lackluster because of the dark background. It makes it a little harder to appreciate this card. There's not a lot of uh, there's not a lot of hollow action going on with this card. But I love when the light hits just right, and Gengar's eyes light up. Really cool. Uh, but yeah, those are some of the cards that defined um, the Sun and Moon era with the tag team. I mean. I mean, literally, both of these came, uh, both of these came up, and uh, team up. Both of them did. They're both absolutely phenomenal. Uh, and I would argue, if you're gonna buy sealed product in Sun and Moon, team up is probably the best box that you can buy in terms of the appreciation. I think team up is gonna end up being like a five thousand dollar, ten thousand dollar box in the next couple of years, at least. Um, there's still people opening that product up. There's still people trying to get these alt arts and a PSA 10. I think that product's going to go down. But uh, yeah, the uh, the future of alt arts, I I really wouldn't worry too much about it. If you have a lot of alt arts, I would be proud of yourself. Uh, for my friends that have completed their alt art goals, um, I'm really proud of you guys. Um, for those of you that have completed sword and shield sets with all the alt arts, Really proud of you guys. I'm working on it. I'm like 70% on most of my sets. Um, but I have the important alt arts that I really want. Most of them are raw and ungraded. Um, because a lot of my friends were just like, these are not going to get 10s. And it's not worth it for you to grade modern raw alt arts if you're not going to get a 10. But I do want to say if PSA grading costs do end up inching up down the road and become like $20, $25, you know, rates go up, inflation goes up. If if those prices go up, grading anything right now for 15 bucks is actually kind of a no-brainer. So I think a lot of people that are buying graded slabs and tens and also grading them themselves, they're going to do really well in this market. Um, and on top of that, just flipping raw alternate arts. When I was at, um, I'll reiterate this again, when I was at Collecticon, the vendors mostly wanted raw cards. They didn't even really want like graded slabs that's not what they were going after they wanted stuff that would take up less space less hassle easier to store easy to display um and unfortunately the raw cards take the cake as far as that goes so um if you're collecting for yourself you know i'm more of a slab collector i like collecting slabs but i also want to start building back up to just buying singles um there is a kind of a a vendor um show going on at one of my local shops uh, here in Charlotte. A friend of mine let me know about that event. I might go to that. I might be able to catch some video for you guys and have something fun that you can look forward to. Uh, if I don't, I apologize, but it is something I'm interested in. I'm just not sure if I'm going to have time or if uh, Diana is going to want me to go to a card thing um, because I also have to work tonight. So, um, but yeah, there, I might, I might go check that out just if anything to see what people are buying, uh, maybe to get some video footage. I can't really buy anything right now. Anyways, my, I'm really trying to build myself into a better financial situation. Uh, and that is the reality sometimes. Um, not everything is, is opening packs and breaking booster boxes and mystery, mystery boxes. It's sometimes you have to take a step back. You have to enjoy your collection. You have to enjoy your collection and um, be grateful for what you have. And I'm really grateful for how far I've come as a collector and the things that I've acquired over time. And that's a big lesson here in this video is just enjoy what you have. Um, especially if you've got modern alt arts, they could be the hidden gems of the future. Um, and honestly, everybody seems to really love alt arts. I don't see them struggling. Uh, long term. I think in the short term, a year or two, maybe three, we'll see prices kind of trending slightly up. But overall, I think you guys should be really excited for the alt art market. And um, I think you guys should be really blessed and grateful, honestly, myself included, to be in these eras where the some of the coolest Pokemon cards ever came out. Um, we can't say that after the, you know, the EX era, after 2005, things changed for Pokemon. And, you know, you might like level X's. 
Um, you know, you, you might think um, Pokemon had some really amazing cards in those middle eras. I know people really like the full arts, but as far as alternate arts and anything like that, really wasn't anything like that until now. Uh, so it's a really amazing time to be in the hobby, and it definitely defines an entire generation of collectors. Um, pretty cool. Anyways, let me know what you guys think about alternate arts. Um, if you guys are totally trying to collect all of them, or if you guys are collecting certain ones, or if you guys are investing in them or strictly collecting in them, just let me know. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Deuce, deuce.